Good morning, everyone. It's Reverend Nicola and Jeff, um, my husband, Hello. coming to you from our office here in um, Bedford. And today we're going to be doing morning prayer with everybody for Lent 5A. Um, and you can find the file either um, in the file section that way, or um, you might have received an email from me too. So you can use that as well. And if you have a BAS book at home, it's on page 45 that we'll be doing today. Um, for announcements, I will send something out or I'll have something written for everybody. Um, I'm working on Easter packages right now, so I'll be sending those out Tuesday so that you'll get your palm crosses as well as some things that you can use uh, to um, worship on Good Friday and uh, on Easter Sunday. Of course, we'll still have worship, but these are just extra things to supplement your time with God during those times. Um, and I guess with that all being said, we shall uh, turn to page 45 and let us pray. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to God and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we turn to morning prayer. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us. Selah. That you, your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for your judge the peoples with equity, and guide the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Amen. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. And the Vanity is on page 49. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. 
Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And today's psalm is Psalm 130, found on page 888, and I shall read it together, and then at the end we shall say the prayer. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. Rescue, Rescue us, us, O God, for whom we wait, from the depths of depression and despair. May we trust in your mercy, know the fullness of your redemption, and share in the glory of your kingdom through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And our first reading, a reading from the book of Ezekiel. 37, 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say, say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I, as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had become on them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the press, to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And our canticle is number six, found on page 80. I will take you from the nations, and gather you from every country, and bring you home to your own land. I will pour clean water upon you, purify you from all defilement, and cleanse you from all your idols. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. I will take from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, make you walk in my ways, and observe my decrees. You shall dwell in the land I give to your forebears. 
You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Actually, it's of John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, whom you love is Ill. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, and the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and go quickly out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. 
Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench, because he's been in there for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And we'll now say Canticle 19a on page 88. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous, in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. May nothing but the truth be spoken. May nothing but the truth be received. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I listen to this gospel and I hear Mary and Martha say to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It is easy to imagine these words being uttered around the world today. People are sick, people are dying, and I cannot say that it is for the glory of God. Some people are grieving, some are afraid, some are questioning why God would allow this bad thing to happen, and others are looking for someone or something to blame. Most of us are relying on social media like today to worship and to stay connected. And recently, I came, it came to my attention that there is a post going around about Isaiah 2620. And some are claiming it to be prophetic because of the date and the scripture number. And it says, Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. And it was prophetic when it was written because it's all about context. 
And when you put this passage or this verse into context, it's in the midst of an ongoing political crisis due to the dominating Mesopotamian powers. And Israel is under the incorrect impression that as long as they went through the motions, that God would spare their cities and temples from harm. They learned a hard lesson when Assyria destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 BC followed by Babylon, the Babylon's destruction and exile of the southern kingdom of Judah in 586 BC. Isaiah is responding to questions and doubts from Israel about who God is and if God is even for them. My friends, Isaiah's message is to point the people of God to the only refuge that they can trust in, their God. God is faithful and no matter what happens and no matter where they go, he remains their God. God is to be trusted over human power and people are called not to make alliances with these foreign powers, though it's tempting in order to save their current way of life. So let me express to you right now that in no way, shape or form is what we are experiencing with this pandemic a result of God's wrath. That's not the God I know. That's not the God I believe in. God is with us all the time, even now, my friends. And I promise you, we are not alone. With that being said, let's talk about our readings today and those words we hear from Mary and Martha when they say, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And as soon as they are said, there's a stone rolled away, an empty tomb, and grave clothes lying abandoned. Lazarus' miracle, though, is not resurrection, because he will die physically again. That's true, but it's not all the truth. The other half of the truth lies in Jesus' words. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In other words, the most important acceptance of new life for Lazarus had actually happened before he ever got sick. The raising of Lazarus, however, important for Mary and Martha, however important for Jesus' own immediate future, is for Lazarus himself much less important than his initial and ongoing faith in Jesus, the Christ. That was Lazarus' entrance into the new life, the life that would not die. The new life was the life Lazarus lived before and after the events we hear today. He shared in the quality of life that Jesus who loved him lives and gives to all who receive it. And that life doesn't die, whatever happens to the body. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. It's an extraordinary statement, and it combines a remarkable degree of faith and a hint of blame. It begs one to ask the natural question, the very human question. If God is really so powerful, then why not hold him responsible for the times and ways when he doesn't use that power? And this very question has led to the creation of theodicies. The word theodicy is derived from two Greek words, the words theos for God and dike for right, combined to mean the vindication of God. It is to answer the question of why a good God permits the manifestation of evil, thus resolving the issue of the problem of evil. Like the example of the Isaiah verse that is going around, as human beings we tend to look at theodicies to explain what's going on in our world. 
We look to them for an answer or to point blame, even if it's subconsciously. So what I'm saying is we tend to do it in an unhealthy way by blaming God when bad things happen or by calling those bad things God's judgment on sinners which I will not even get into right now because honestly we would be here for an hour. So even more unhealthy and perhaps by saying in resignation is when we say it was God's will. My friends, bad things are not God's will. At least not in any simple sense. If Jesus is God the Son, as we proclaim, we need to take seriously his tears at Lazarus' grave. Even though he had told his disciples earlier, it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man may be gloried by its means. In other words, this is all according to that master plan. This is for the good. Nevertheless, at the gravesite, Jesus... God, as well as man, wept. And theologians have speculated about those tears for centuries. Since Jesus knew what he was going to do, they were not just simple tears, mourning the loss of a friend. But whether they were tears of sympathy for his dear friend Mary and Martha, or tears of rage at the evil of death, or even tears brought on by the stress of knowing that what he was about to do would hasten his own agony. Jesus wept. God's will is being done. And yet God the Son, the Son of God, wept. So God's will cannot be so simple as we often imagine. God's will includes a willingness to suffer God's self and temporarily for a greater good that we cannot see. For human beings to suffer, even though that increases God's own suffering, soon Jesus' will, Jesus will weep again. And this time Jesus will weep tears of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. And soon there will be another tomb another empty body wrapped in linens, more women weeping at their loss. It's interesting because John's Gospel and the lectionary both place Lazarus' death and life immediately before Jesus' last week in Jerusalem. One obvious reason seems to be the common symbols, the grave and its stone covering, the wrappings, the weeping women, the raising of Lazarus is a foreshadowing of what is to come, but it is also a cause for it. Jesus' act on his friend's behalf is the immediate reason for the religious authorities' decision that his ministry must end, that he must die, or their entire world and way of life would be destroyed. And Jesus is no fool. He knows what he is doing. And what the results will be for himself, he knows he is putting his life on the line. So now, for Lazarus, as later, for all Jesus' followers in every time and place, Jesus is deliberately offering his life for his friend. Our new life, like Lazarus's, comes from Jesus' life. But it comes in the way by his death and by the way of our own. And we can die now or we can die later. And I recognize that speaking about dying in the midst of this pandemic is a bit uncomfortable. But I'm speaking about dying to our false self, not physically dying like Lazarus. What I mean by that is, like Father Richard Rohr explains, dying to the false self before our physical death allows us to be reborn as our more authentic, soulful selves. In one way or another, and in almost all religions, they say that we must die to our false selves before we die. And then we'll actually know what the meaning of our death is. 
and of course, what our death doesn't mean. So our usual viewing platform is the mental ego, and, and it is utterly inadequate to see what is real. It is largely useless to talk about the very ground of our being, our true self, our deepest soul, until we have made real contact with it at least once. To do that demands dying to our old viewing platform of that mental ego and that false self. There's just no way around it. If we truly connect with God, we will forever know that something is there that can be talked about and relied upon and deeply trusted. We move from religion as mere belief to religion as a new kind of knowing, just like Lazarus. Lazarus died to self before he physically died. And therefore, even when he died, he lived. And so can we. God is very tough-minded, willing to do and allow whatever is necessary for our infinite joy. And God is very tender-minded and tender-hearted, weeping with us and suffering with us and for us on the way to that joy. Lord, if you had been there. My friends, Jesus was there. In Lazarus's life and in Lazarus's death. In his raising, rising, and his second physical death. And he will be with us in ours. Lazarus both died and lived in that new life that is Jesus. In that new life, there is no death. Only change from glory to glory. That new life is ours, if we accept it. It is what Jesus lived and died for and rose again to give us. Thanks be to God. My friends, these are trying times. I remind us all that God is with us. And this too shall pass. Amen. Amen. And of course, we won't have an offering hymn and we won't have um, a way to collect offerings today. Um, but we have posted the uh, four ways or three ways that you can um, give your offering uh, to our church. Um, so with that being said, uh, we'll page, uh, turn to page 52 and we will confess our belief. As we say, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We shall now have the intercessions and thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. For the life and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in and and all in any kind of need or distress, and we especially pray for and hold in our hearts those who are sick in our parish, and we pray for Earl and Brenda, Sheila Pro, 
Paulette, Guthrie, Annie, Angela, Leslie, Jerry Holzer, Tom Blood, Hayward, Andrew, Debbie, Percy and Faith, Doug and Rebecca and family, Bernie and Joyce, David, Kevin and Lynn. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are caring for the sick, like Brad, who works in the hospital, nursing those requiring care. We ask you to give them the skill, sympathy, and resilience. Give your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed, yeah. hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and the peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us today. And God bless. <laughs>